One of the most basic and critical skills you're going to need to play the piano is how to read music. Well, your piano teacher, Tim, has you covered here because today I'm going to walk you through everything you need to know about reading music from the beginning. Let's get it. So the first thing you need to know about learning to read music is learning about the staff, the lines and spaces on each staff. So let me show you exactly what I'm talking about here. Okay, so taking a look here, so you see that they have these two things, um, these two symbols here. We have the treble clef right there and the bass clef right there. Now the treble clef, the top one, 99% of the time or so, you're going to be playing with your right hand. They're going to be the notes that are higher up on the keyboard, specifically basically from middle C up that way. Bass clef generally from middle C down that way. And if you think about it, it makes perfect sense since when you sit at the keyboard, your right hand's gonna be over here, the left hand's going to be over there. On each staff, we're gonna be taking a look at the treble clef here. Um, there are two staffs together. They are called the grand staff. But on the top staff here, the treble clef, we have a staff is always made up of five lines. One, two, three, four, Five, and you can have a note on each of those lines or you can have notes on spaces and there are four of those one two three and four now depending on which line or space a note falls under it's going to tell you what note to play either a b c d e f or g but it's also going to show you on the piano where to play that note for instance if i had a note right there that specifically on that second line would be right here on the piano and don't you worry I'm gonna teach you how you figure that out. So let's get started. What I recommend you do is memorize the lines and spaces for each clef from the bottom to the top. You always wanna be counting from this bottom one to the top because if you do it the other way, you're gonna get it backwards and get it wrong, most importantly. So let's take a look here. So here you go. This is what I want you to do. So the bottom line is E. The next line up is G. The next line up is B. The next one up from there is D. And then finally you have F at the top. Now what I recommend you do is assign a saying to this where each of the first letters of the saying correspond to each of the notes. So I always like to use this phrase every. So E for every. Good. Next line up. Boy. That middle line deserve the next line up and then fries or fudge or whatever um, word that you can think of that has an f in it so every good boy deserves fudge next i want you to memorize the spaces the spaces are f a c e do we need a saying for this one well not really right because it spells the word face so let's take a look here. So F-A-C-E, face. So what were they again on the lines? It was every good boy deserves fries or fudge. And then the spaces were F-A-C-E. And now you, do you count from the top to the bottom? No, you count from the bottom to the top. So let's practice just a few of these so you get the idea. I am going to link you to a playlist at the end to give you more practice with all this stuff because there is a lot to move through. So if I have a note right here, on that top space or bottom space sorry uh what note is that going to be well it's spaces right and that spells the word face so what's the first letter in face well that is f now we're going to talk about where on the keyboard so this f specifically is right there right above middle c like i said the notes you're working with with the treble clef are from middle c up here so this is the first f you have right here let's move the note down one See what happens. So I move the note down one on the staff. It also moves the note down one on the keyboard. Makes sense? So if you have F here, well, this one down is going to be E. Or you could have used the saying, every good boy deserves fries, um, with E being right there. So that's the first E above middle C. So wait a second. How come treble clefs from middle C up here if it's not on the staff? Well. They add these things, we're gonna talk about this later in the lesson, called ledger lines. So this is actually where the first note in the treble clef um, is outside the staff. So you are gonna see notes here, here. You can find a couple below middle C, but pretty much from middle C up into the staff 
and then beyond. Okay, so if that's middle C right here, then this note right here is gonna be one up from there. It's gonna be D. And that's why this first E is right here, because you're counting up from middle C right there. Okay, let's do a couple more of these. How about if I move the note to here? Well, that's the third space up on the treble clef, so that's C, that's the third letter in face. And is it gonna be right here? This is middle C, by the way. Uh, well, no, right? Because middle C had to be on that ledger line. So if I have the ledger line right here with C on it, and this note's way up here, well, you can see the big gap there on the sheet music. That gap is also gonna exist on the piano. So it's the next C, what we call an octave above, meaning it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight notes above. How about if I have a note all the way at the top? Well, that's the top line. So what's the saying? Every good boy deserves fries. So right here is where that one's gonna be. And if you think about it, it can't be here, remember, because that's where the first space is. And if you think about it, that's a lot closer to middle C, right there. But then the top two notes here, they're much further apart. So that's kind of how you can judge, you know, basically how high up the keyboard or low on the keyboard you're going to be going for these. And don't you worry, it gets a lot easier. It, you'll start to pick it up and understand a lot easier as you go. Let's talk about the bass clef now. Now, unfortunately for us and all students, the treble clef and bass clef do not match. So the lines of the bass clef are gonna be different than the treble clef, spaces, same thing. So the first thing you wanna do is memorize the lines of the bass clef. And those are going to be great big dogs fight animals. You can actually use a bunch of different ones for this, but that's what I do. So G for great, um, B for big, D for dogs, F for fight, and A for animals. Next, you wanna memorize the spaces. So now we got a space here, space, space, space. The spaces from the bottom to the top are all cows eat grass. Then it works the exact same way as the treble clef. Okay, let's practice here. What if I have a note all the way at the top of the staff? Well, that note, let's see, what was the saying? Great big dogs fight. Animals, so that's A for animals. Now, where on the keyboard, now here's the question, where on the keyboard is this A? Well, here's the thing you gotta keep in mind. You gotta ask your first question. Since I said middle C and down is the bass clef, where is middle C? Well, let me show you. Because remember on the treble clef, it was right there. So on the bass clef, because the bass clef goes from up here to down, middle C is actually gonna be right there, it's on a ledger line, first ledger line right above the staff. So these two notes right here, even though they look different on the staff, are exactly the same note. So therefore, let me get rid of that treble clef note, you move this down one, that moves you down to B, and that's why when you move down to this A, that A, let me show you a little bit better there, that A is right there. How about right here? Well, that's great big dogs, right? Now, where is that D? Is this D right here? No, it can't be since middle C is right here and we're working our way down this one. So logically, the first D that takes place um, below middle C anyway is right there. And if you look on the sheet music, they are pretty far apart and they're pretty far apart on the piano as well. Okay, what about this note? Well, now we're switching sayings, right? All cows eat grass. So this is an A. Is it right here? No, because remember that was this A. This one is quite a bit further down. It happens to be an octave down once again. So it's gonna be a whole A down that way. Last one of the bass clef and then we'll move on to something a little bit more advanced. You have the bottom line that's gonna be G for great. Now, how far away is that from middle C? Well, that's quite a ways, right? So it's really unlikely that the G we're talking about is right here because that's only four notes away, that would actually happen to be right there on the staff. This is a whole other octave down that way. So just keep in mind that when you're at the bottom of the bass clef, you're not anywhere near the middle. You're actually quite a bit down there since the bass clef actually goes up towards middle C, whereas the treble clef goes from middle C on the bottom um, up there, just like that. All right, let's move on to our next secret topic.
So how in the world should you be practicing your lines and spaces for each clef? Well, you can get a piece of sheet music and kind of look through them and maybe label them. That's pretty good practice. You can also use some flashcards you can find on Amazon, but there's a free way to do it, um, both online and on your phone. I want to point you to musictheory.net slash exercises slash note. Hopefully I will remember to put that in the description. Uh, so here you go, but you can type it in if you need to. So here you go. This is pretty much exactly what we did. Now the thing is, is that you want to hit this icon up here and you want to move the, um, the notes to the ones we talked about. So if you want to tr practice treble clef and bass clef, click on grand staff. Next, I recommend you start with notes on the staff. So, oh, that's the bass clef one. There you go. And then move that down. And that shows you the range of the notes it's going to be testing you on. It doesn't make sense to test notes that you really haven't practiced or you really don't know the theory behind. So when you first start out with these, start with something simpler um, so that you can grab a hold of it a little bit easier rather than confusing yourself. Key signatures, that's fine. Um, and then I think we're good. All right, cool. So here we go. So, you know, fourth line up on the treble clef, that is D. And then what I recommend, it doesn't have you do it on here, but I recommend you also find them on the staff just the way we did. Might take a little bit longer, but hey, that is how you're gonna get really good at these. I recommend you spend maybe 10 minutes a day on this and probably over a month, you're gonna be really, really, really good at reading notes on the staff. Okay, one way to get way better at reading music and read music way, way faster is by using what's called intervals. Now, before I teach you about this, it's really important to keep in mind that you want to be practicing the notes on the staff just the way we did in part one here um, for a while and get used to that before adding this on top. This is really after you've accomplished that already. An interval is the distance between two notes. So that's an interval. That's an interval, that's an interval, that's an interval. So I think you get the idea. Um, and intervals go from second up to octave and beyond. So let me show you what I mean. So if you have a note and the very next note, that's what's called a second. They're just one, two away from each other. You have a note, you skip a note, you have that note, that's what's called a third. You go one more up, that's a fourth. There are four notes away, five, same reason. I think you get the idea six seventh and then that's why I said octave and beyond because this is where the octave is and then you can even have which is eight by the way and then you even have ninth tenth eleventh twelfth thirteenth I highly recommend you at least know up to an octave maybe even nine and ten eleven things like that but at least start practicing up to an octave now let me show you exactly how this is going to help you out All right, let's take our treble clef here, and let me write two notes here. Now, I can read those two notes individually, which because there's two of them isn't too hard. Um, so I know the bottom line's E, and then the next line up is G. You know, every good, just along with our saying. So you can hit E, you can hit G. Now, if you notice, that took, a while, even though I knew it right away, it took a while for me to get there. What's a lot faster is looking on the sheet music and determining how far apart these intervals are. And because I know my intervals so well, I'm gonna walk you through them, I know that that's a third right away. So I really only need to read that bottom note, E, and just know that that's a third away. It gets more and more useful the more notes you have. So let me walk you through all the intervals on the sheet music here. So second, seconds are so close together that they actually go side by side, you know, once you get there. So that's the only one like that. Then you have a third, that looks like a stacked snowman. So you just have a line, a line. You can also have them go from space to space. It doesn't really matter um, so long as they have that even stacking right there. Let me bring it back to where we were at. All right, what if I move this one one up? Well, since the other one was a third, this has to be a fourth. So E to A. So, you'll, this, so they won't match. You have a line and then a space. Um, with maybe like a little bit of a space in between here. And that doesn't matter where it happens on the piano. You can start with a space down here, and the top one will be a line. But they're not too far up. Like that would be a sixth, that would be an eighth. Um, so there's a fourth right there with just a little bit of a, a gap in there. Okay, fifth. 
is when you basically have a snowman without a middle. Um, so you basically have a space, no space, and then another space. Well, what if it falls under a line? Well, like I said, it doesn't really matter. It's still a fifth. So you have line, no line, and then another line. So there is number five. Let me show you number six here. Number six is just one more past that, so they won't match. So if the bottom one's a line, top one will be a space, bottom one's a space, top one will be a line, quite a mouthful. So you notice that there's a much bigger gap here than there was with a fourth, because a fourth was down there, whereas a sixth would be up there. It's easy to get six and fourths mixed up. You'll get the hang of it. All right, seventh is when you move up one more. So you basically have line, no line, no line, and then another line. Uh, same thing if it starts on the space. You'd have space, no space, no space, and then another space. And then the last one I'm going to go over with you right now is the octave, the king of all intervals. So you got e, um, e on the bottom, E on the top, so the octave will always match, obviously. And But the notes um, in terms of lines and spaces do not match. For instance, you have a line on the bottom, top note will be a space, and then vice versa. And if you notice, the gap here is quite large. It's much larger than it was at a sixth, which was right here, or a fourth, which was right there. So a quick tip for you is that all even intervals don't match. So that's seconds, fourths, sixths, and octaves. So here you go. And what I mean by don't match is that if um, the bottom one's a line, the other one will be space and vice versa. So you know that that's an even number interval. You know that that's an even number interval because line space. You know that that's an even number interval. What about that one? That one is actually going to be an odd number interval. So odd number intervals, they do match. So if you have a line here, the other one's going to be a line. So odd, 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 and they got even, 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 and even just like that. Okay, let me show you a quick practice example here on the staff and on the keyboard to make sure that we got the concept. Okay, I have three notes here. Like I said, this technique is great for uh, many notes at the same time. So I can read these notes individually. Okay, that's an F, you know, that's the next space A, and then the last one is an E. So that takes a little bit of a while, but what I can do is I can just play the bottom note, F, and then I see that that's the beginning of a stacked snowman. They, they match, so that's an odd number interval. That's gonna be a third. And then you have a fifth um, and then a seventh up here because you can see that the fifth would be right here, but it's absent. So you got um, the first note, then a third up, and then a fifth up basically from that A there. One, two, three, four, five. So I can do it really quick. Let me do one on my own really quick because as I explain them, it takes more time, but let me do one like kind of complicated here and then once I play it, I'll walk you through it. It's probably going to be a terrible sounding thing, but here we go. Okay, so you got the bottom note F. That You can see that second right away on the bottom. And then you can see between those two middle notes, the G and the B, that that's a third, evenly stacked. And then from the B up to the F is clearly a fifth, which I can't play with one hand. So there you go. I could read them so much faster than going, okay, F. And then, okay, what's the saying for the next one? So on and so forth. Um, but like I said, you do want to get used to doing the sayings at first um, and then build up to this technique. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to practice these intervals. So let's take a look. I got another website for you. It's musictheory.net again, a slash exercises slash interval. And um, you, can, you can also find apps on your phone for this as well. Again, you want to go up to the little gear at the top. You want to select, you know, um, something that you're going to be familiar with, like the range. Um, you don't want to be using, uh, you don't want to like have quality in there yet. We didn't talk about that today. Um, intervals, seven is pretty good. I think that's as like high up as they go. And then once you get advanced, you can go up to 15. But for right now, one through seven is perfect. So I think we're ready to start here. So let's see what this first one is. Okay, so here's the thing is that this is on a ledger line way down there. And I might not know that note. So what I would do is I would read this top note instead assuming that I'm a beginner practicing, you know, notes on the staff first. So this first note is F clearly, because that's the first space of the treble clef. And then you don't have a, um, you know, there's an empty space there, and then there's another space. So if the top note's on a space, bottom note's on a space, 
is it going to be an even number interval or an odd number interval? Well, if they match, it's actually an odd number interval. It can kind of be opposite of what you might think. So, and I know right away that this is a fifth, so going to the piano, I have my F up here. You're gonna, if you skip a note down here, that's a third, and then skip another one, there's your fifth. One, two, three, four, five. Just sounds just lovely. So I'm gonna click fifth, and hey, that was the right answer, it glowed green. What about these two? You got an F on the bottom, and um, you basically have a note on the top. So you have a space and, and then a line. They do not match, so that's an even number interval, and that one is a fourth. I'm just gonna do two more here. Oh, that's the fifth again, the same one. And then this one, right, this one should be easy. This one is the stacked snowman, evenly stacked. That's a third. So go through and practice these. Um, once you learn how to read the notes on the staff and you feel proficient at that, then branch out to this and practice this for 10 minutes a day, maybe in place of the note reading. Now the thing is, is after you start practicing this, if you start feeling like you're, you don't have the notes memorized anymore on the staff, go back and practice the other exercise I did with reading the notes separately. I mentioned earlier in the lesson about ledger lines, the notes that go up and below the staff. So let's talk about that and I'll give you some tips on how to master those. This is something you should practice after you practice notes on the staff, after you practice intervals because the intervals will actually help you read the ledger lines. Well, let's take a look. Okay, so I mentioned before we have the bottom note E here. You move this down. You got C, there's middle C. And then it's like, all right, well, what happens when the notes get really, really low? What do I do? So this note's E. So let me write these notes out for us and see if we can pick up a pattern. Okay, so these four notes from the bottom to the top, I'm gonna tell you right now, are F, A, C, E. G. Doesn't that sound familiar? It kind of does, right? F, A, C, E spells face. Okay, so now we have these four notes. Let's see if we notice a pattern. I'm gonna give you what they are and we're gonna figure out if we notice anything familiar. So these lines are E, or spaces, sorry. E, G, B, D, and then we have our first space on the, um, on the treble clef, F. So therefore, the spaces going down off the staff match the lines on the staff. Of course, these will keep, take some practice. It's not something you're, that you're going to get super good at right away. Okay, so now we have the spaces going up off the staff. Now, let's see if these look familiar. You have F up here. Next one's A, C, E. So the lines going up off the staff are actually match the spaces on, on the staff. Now, let me show you how to do this technique with the intervals that we just talked about. Okay, let's take a look at some notes coming up off the staff in the ledger line. So this is where the intervals are really, really going to come into play um, because you can use them to your advantage. Let me show you what I mean here. Okay, so we have these four notes. You know what that b bottom note is probably. That note, of course, is going to be F because, right, every good boy deserves fries. And then take a look at these two notes. So F and then you have this note right next to it like that. That's gonna be a second, right? They don't match and they're real close to each other. So second, so a second on the keyboard right next to each other. So you got F, then that next, the second note is G. Let's take a look between the second note and then that third note. So we have space and then another space. Well, hey, that's gotta be an odd number interval and they're still pretty close. So that's gonna be a third. So you have F, G, B, and then another third between those last two, so you can use your intervals. This is why I told you to practice them to um, read notes much, much faster, even up off the staff. Let's do another, uh, let's go down below the staff, actually, see how intervals may be able to help us. So now we have these four notes. You probably know the first note's F, you know, first space of the treble clef. You're going down a third on that next one because it's space to space. And then you got these two notes from D, to middle C, I already taught you about that one pretty good, so there's a second away. And then um, let's take a look between these last two notes, which is gonna be the trickiest. So if I just write this C right here, you can see that you have a, you have a line, you have a line that's empty, or so line, no line, and then a line. I said earlier that that is a fifth, and that is correct. So what you do is you play C, and then you just go one, two, three, four, five, and you can figure out right away that that note is F. Taking a look at the bass clef, we're just gonna practice a few of these. So here are our four notes. We got the top, 
line of the bass clef, that's going to be A, as you probably know. And then you got a line and then a space. So do those, is that an odd number interval or an even? Well, that's even, right? Because they don't match. Now, a second would be right there. This one's a little bit higher up than that. So we're talking about a fourth. So you can count up four on your keyboard. One, two, three, four. So our next note's D. So between the middle two notes there, you got D and then the mystery note here. Well, that's right next to each other, right? So that's just gonna be a second above. You know that that's E. And then let's take a look here. You got the last note there, um, the first space above the staff. Um, so those don't match. We're talking about an even number interval. They're a little bit further away. So now I know that that one is B. So the notes are A, D, E, B. Now, how should you practice your ledger lines? Well, go back to the first note reading um, exercise I gave you today because that one you just changed the settings to work on ledger lines. Let me just really quick show you how to do that just so you're not confused. Okay, taking a look here on the note exercise. So it's the same exercise, musictheory.net slash exercises slash notes. But you click on the gear here and what you want to do is you want to click on range and change that range to include notes that are on those ledger lines and that's going to give you you know, some pretty good practice on those. To get an even better understanding of reading music intervals and all the things we talked about today, make sure you check out this playlist right here to learn more all about it. So it's been your piano teacher, Tim, here. Thank you so much for coming by, and I'll see you, yes, you, in the next lesson.